Yajna IAST, Yajna literally means sacrifice, devotion, worship, offering, and refers in Hinduism to any ritual done in front of a sacred fire, often with mantras. Yajna has been a Vedic tradition, described in a layer of Vedic literature called Brahmanas, as well as Yajurveda. The tradition has evolved from offering oblations and libations into sacred fire to symbolic offerings in the presence of sacred fire Agni. Yajna rituals related texts have been called the Karma Kanda ritual works portion of the Vedic literature in contrast to Jnana Kanda knowledge portion contained in the Vedic Upanishads. The proper completion of yajna like rituals was the focus of Mimamsa school of Hindu philosophy. Yajna have continued to play a central role in a Hindu's rites of passage, such as weddings. Modern major Hindu temple ceremonies, Hindu community celebrations, or monastic initiations may also include yajna Vedic rites, or alternatively be based on agamic rituals. <laughs> Etymology The word yajna, Sanskrit, yajna, yajna has its root in the Sanskrit yaj meaning to worship, adore, honor, revere, and appears in the early Vedic literature, composed in 2nd millennium BCE. In Rigveda, Yajurveda itself a derivative of this root and others, it means worship, devotion to anything, prayer and praise, an act of worship or devotion, a form of offering or oblation, and sacrifice. In post-Vedic literature, the term meant any form of rite, ceremony or devotion with an actual or symbolic offering or effort. A yajna included major ceremonial devotions, with or without a sacred fire, sometimes with feasts and community events. It has, states Nigal, a threefold meaning of worship of the deities Devapujana, unity Sangatikarana, and charity Dorna. .The Sanskrit word is related to the Avestan term yasna of Zoroastrianism. Unlike the Vedic yajna, however, the yasna is the name of a specific religious service, not a class of rituals, and they have to do with water rather than fire. The Sanskrit word is further related to ancient Greek hazomai, hazomai to revere, deriving from the Proto-Indo-European root asterisk here, to worship. History Yajna has been a part of an individual or social ritual since the Vedic times. When the ritual fire, the divine Agni, the god of fire and the messenger of gods, were deployed in a yajna, mantras were chanted. The hymns and songs sung and oblations offered into the fire were a form of hospitality for the Vedic gods. The offerings were carried by Agni to the gods, the gods in return were expected to grant boons and benedictions, and thus the ritual served as a means of spiritual exchange between gods and human beings. The Vedangas, or auxiliary sciences attached to the Vedic literature, define yajna as follows Definition of a Vedic sacrifice Apastamba Yajna Parabhasa Sutras 1.1, translator, M. Davamoni in the Upanishadic times, or after 500 BCE, states Sakura, the meaning of the term yajna evolved from ritual sacrifice performed around fires by priests, to any personal attitude and action or knowledge that required devotion and dedication. The oldest Vedic Upanishads, such as the Chandogya Upanishad tilde 700 BCE in Chapter 8, for example state, Chandogya Upanishad 8.5.1 The later Vedic Upanishads expand the idea further by suggesting that yoga is a form of yajna devotion, sacrifice. The Shvatashvatara Upanishad in verse 1.5.14, for example, uses the analogy of yajna materials to explain the means to see one's soul and God, within a rituals and without external rituals. It states by making one's own body as the lower friction sticks, the syllable om as the upper friction sticks, then practicing the friction of meditation, one may see the deva who is hidden, as it were. Protocols <inaudible> 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 
Vedic yajnas are typically performed by four priests of the Vedic priesthood, the Hotar, the Advaru, the Ujjatar and the Brahman. The functions associated with the priests were The Horti recites invocations and litanies drawn from the Rigveda. The Advaru is the priest's assistant and is in charge of the physical details of the ritual like measuring the ground, building the altar explained in the Yajurveda. The Advaru offers oblations. The Ujjatri is the chanter of hymns set to melodies and music drawn from the Samaveda. The Ujjatar, like the Hotar, chants the introductory, accompanying and benediction hymns. The Brahman is the superintendent of the entire performance, and is responsible for correcting mistakes by means of supplementary verses. <laughs> <laughs> Offerings and style There were usually one, or three, fires lit in the center of the offering ground. Oblations are offered into the fire. Among the ingredients offered as oblations in the yajna are ghee, milk, grains, cakes and soma. The duration of a yajna depends on its type, some last only a few minutes whereas, others are performed over a period of hours, days or even months. Some yajnas were performed privately, while others were community events. In other cases, yajnas were symbolic, such as in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad hymn 3.1.6, where the mind is the Brahman of sacrifice, and the goal of sacrifice was complete release and liberation. Moksha, the benedictions proffered ranged from long life, gaining friends, health and heaven, more prosperity, to better crops. For example, Yajnas, where milk products, fruits, flowers, cloth and money are offered, are called Homa or Havanam. A typical Hindu marriage involves a yajna, where Agni is taken to be the witness of the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Methods The Vedic yajna ritual is performed in modern era in a square altar called Vedi Bedi in Nepal, set in a mandapa or mandala or kundam, wherein wood is placed along with oily seeds and other combustion aids. However, in ancient times, the square principle was incorporated into grids to build large complex shapes for community events. Thus a rectangle, trapezia, rhomboids or large falcon bird altars would be built from joining squares. The geometric ratios of these Vedi altar, with mathematical precision and geometric theorems, are described in Shulba Sutras, one of the precursors to the development of mathematics in ancient India. The offerings are called Samagri or Yajaka, Istam. The proper methods for the rites are part of Yajurveda, but also found in riddle hymns, hymns of questions, followed by answers in various Brahmanas. When multiple priests are involved, they take turns as in a dramatic play, where not only are praises to gods recited or sung, but the dialogues are part of a dramatic representation and discussion of spiritual themes. The Vedic sacrifice yajna is presented as a kind of drama, with its actors, its dialogues, its portion to be set to music, its interludes, and its climaxes. The Brahmodya riddle hymns, for example, in Shatapatha Brahmana's chapter 13.2.6, is a yajna dialogue between a haughty priest and a Brahman priest, which would be played out during the yajna ritual before the attending audience. <laughs> <laughs> during weddings Agni and yajna play a central role in Hindu weddings. Various mutual promises between the bride and groom are made in front of the fire, and the marriage is completed by actual or symbolic walk around the fire. The wedding ritual of Panigrahana, for example, is the holding the hand ritual as a symbol of their impending marital union, and the groom announcing his acceptance of responsibility to four deities, Bhaga signifying wealth, Ayama signifying heavens, Milky Way, Savita signifying radiance, new beginning, and Purandi signifying wisdom. The groom faces west, while the bride sits in front of him with her face to the east, he holds her hand while the Rig Vedic mantra is recited in the presence of fire. The Saptapadi Sanskrit for seven steps, feet, is the most important ritual in Hindu weddings, and represents the legal part of Hindu marriage. 
The couple getting married walk around the holy fire Agni, and the Yajna fire is considered a witness to the vows they make to each other. In some regions, a piece of clothing or sashes worn by the bride and groom are tied together for this ceremony. Each circuit around the fire is led by either the bride or the groom, varying by community and region. Usually, the bride leads the groom in the first circuit. The first six circuits are led by the bride, and the final one by the groom. With each circuit, the couple makes a specific vow to establish some aspect of a happy relationship and household for each other. The fire altar or the yajna kunda is square. Topic. Types Kalpa Sutras lists the following yajna types The Pakyajnas they are the Astaka, Stalipaka, Parvana, Sravani, Agrahayani, Katri, and Asvayuji. These yajnas involve consecrating cooked items. Soma yajnas Agnastoma, Atyagnastoma, Uktya, Shodasi, Vijaypaya, Atiratra and Aptayama are the Soma Yajnas. Havir Yajnas — they are the Agnayadana, Agnihotra, Dasa Purnamasa, Agrayana, Katurmasya, Nirudapasu Banda, Sautramani. These involve offering havis or oblations. The five Panka Maha Yajnas, which are mentioned below. Vedavratas, which are four in number, done during Vedic education. The remaining sixteen yajnas, which are one-time samskaras or rituals with mantras, a samskara rite of passage, Garvadana, Pumsavana, Simanta, Jatakama, Namakarana, Anaprasana, Chudakama, Kala, Niskramana, Karnavada, Vidyaramva, Upanayana, Keshanta, Snataka and Vivaha, Nisheka, Antaishti. These are specified by the Griya Sutras. Topic: The changing nature of a Vedic sacrifice. The nature of Vedic sacrifice and rituals evolved over time, with major changes during the first millennium BCE. Changes that influenced concepts later adopted by other traditions, such as Buddhism. Early Vedic period sacrifices involved animal sacrifice, but the rituals were progressively reinterpreted over time, substituting the offerings and making it non-violent or symbolic, with the superiority of knowledge and celebration of sound of mantra replacing the physical offerings. Ultimately, the external rituals were reformulated and replaced with internal oblations performed within the human body. These ideas of substitution, evolution from external actions karma kanda, to internal knowledge kanda, were highlighted in many rituals-related sutras, as well as specialized texts such as the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad tilde 800 BCE, Chandogya Upanishad, Kaushataki Upanishad and Pranignahort Upanishad. The Vedic text Satipatha Brahmana defines a sacrifice as an act of abandonment of something one holds of value, such as oblations offered to God and Dakshina fees, gifts offered during the yajna. For gifts and fees, the text recommends giving cows, clothing, horses or gold. The oblations recommended are cow milk, ghee, clarified butter, seeds, grains, flowers, water and food cakes, rice cake, for example. Similar recommendations are repeated in other texts, such as in the Taittiriya Shaka 2.10 of the Krishna Yajurveda. Tadosh Skorupski states that these sacrifices were a part of ritual way of life, and considered to have inherent efficacy, where doing these sacrifices yielded repayment and results without the priests or gods getting involved. These Vedic ideas, adds Skorupski, influenced the formulation of Buddhist theory of generosity. Buddhist ideas went further, criticizing the Brahmins for their decadence and failure to live in conformity with the Brahmanic legacy of the ancient Brahmins, who claimed the Vedic ancients lived in self-restraint, were ascetics, had no cattle, no gold, and no wealth. The Buddha sought return to more ancient values, states Tadosh Skorupski, where the Vedic sages had study as their grain and wealth, guarded the holy life as their treasure, praised morality, austerity and non-violence, they performed sacrifices consisting of rice, barley and oil, but they did not kill the cows. <laughs> Topic. 
Topic. See also. Equals equals notes. <laughs>